Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through our equity crowdfunding content checklist. This checklist houses all the different pieces of content you need to create for your equity crowdfunding campaign. First, let me address why content. I often get asked, why should I invest my time and money in content when I can put that money towards advertising? And yes, you should have a decent advertising budget. However, keep in mind that advertising is only top of the funnel, meaning you're driving new investors to a landing page, in this, in this case, your equity crowdfunding raise page. However, that does not address all the middle, middle of the funnel content. And it's typically that content that keeps investors warm and engaged, especially those who might go to your landing page, but bounce and don't convert. So middle of the funnel content provides all that extra information to help keep our leads warm and keep existing investors engaged and updated into the campaign. All right, so now let's dive into our checklist. Let's discuss different channels first that you need to be on for this checklist. You need to be on email, which means you need to have an email marketing tool. And that email marketing tool needs to be updated with all your contacts. That should your, be your first degree connections, your friends, family, and colleagues, and then any other contacts that you might have in your business. So if you have a wait list, if people are opting into your newsletter, et cetera, you need to have your email marketing system ready to go and updated with your existing contacts. Two, you need social media channels. You should have Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at a minimum. If not, say you have a hotter audience on Twitter, then you could also do Twitter as well. We need to keep social media updated as your advertising campaign is through social media on Facebook and Instagram. So it's important to have a presence there and show investors that you have a digital footprint. Your third channel that you need to have is a blog. This blog needs to live on your website. The blog will help over time with SEO efforts. However, it needs to be a place that your larger pieces of information can live. And why do you need a blog on your website? Well, if you're posting on Medium or other channels, you don't own that channel. So if something happens to Facebook, Medium, et cetera, tomorrow, you might lose all of that content. So it's important that you house your blog on your website. And four, you need access to your portal updates. Your portal updates is a big channel as it's where your investors, your hottest audience live. They will receive direct email updates from a portal anytime you post an update there. So it's really important that you work with your portal rep to make sure you have appropriate access and that your login works. Okay, now that I discussed all the channels, let's go right into the checklist. First one is email drips. So an email drip is an automated sequence of emails that occurs after a specific trigger. So for example, say we set up a Facebook lead form ad campaign where we are running ads to gather an email. Someone clicks on the ad, puts in their email. That is the trigger. The trigger is then the email is then sent to your email marketing tool. Once they are added to a list, they go through a specific series of pre-canned emails that you create. This is great for converting very cold leads through a Facebook lead form ad campaign, for example. All those leads are super cold. They're all brand new. And keeping them warm and sending them a series of pieces of information over a course of time. These email series can look like the following. So if you're doing a pre-launch, I recommend setting up a campaign that gives business and launch updates. Follow and then the second email can follow up on the investment opportunity saying, hey, something you know big is coming. Stay tuned in your inbox. And then on the third email, you can remind them of the private launch once you have a confirmed date and time or more set date and time in that week like, hey, Next week, expect something big in your inbox. Once you're live, you should run two campaigns. You should do a prospective investor email drip that's connected to a Facebook lead form ad campaign. Any new leads that come into that campaign should get one, a welcome email, 
and then to a series of emails from there explaining why your investment opportunity is an incredible investment. I typically would recommend doing something about the market and why the market opportunity is awesome, something about your unique differentiators. And from there, I would even include if you have any investor testimonials or video or press features, you can also create and craft emails around that content as well. And then the last drip is for converted investors or active investors. This is a drip solely for people that have invested in your campaign with the goal of keeping them warm and ultimately encouraging them to reinvest. As like I said, they are the lowest hanging fruit. They've already invested in your campaign. They are more willing to potentially reinvest and it takes a lot less work for reinvestments than it does brand new investments. So once someone invests, they should receive the following drip. One, a thank you. That's just best practice. Anyone gives you anything, you should thank them. And you should also lay out expectations as what they can expect as a part of your investor community in terms of communication. Two, I recommend putting a survey, an investor survey together and encouraging your existing investors to take your survey so you can learn a little bit more about them and why they invested. That way you get to know your target audience better. And third, a call to action. If they're interested in reinvesting at a higher amount that they should call you or you should set up a Calendly link to encourage them to book something on your calendar. So you can talk to these investors in person and convert them over the phone. <laughs> so again, to recap, thanks for investing a survey and interest in investing more call. So that's email drips pre-launch drip, a prospective investor, and an active investor drip when you go live. Now let's talk about email newsletters, raise updates, and, and social media posts. On a weekly basis, you should keep your investor community and potential investor community updated on the campaign. You should send a weekly up newsletter, a weekly raise update on your po portal, and at, at minimum uh, be posting one weekly social media post. So what does this content look like? I recommend creating a, a video pitch deck, a video kind of like this, reviewing and walking investors through your pitch deck. It's great evergreen content that you could potentially also clip up into an advertorial. Investor and advisor testimonials. This is huge. You need to have testimonials in your campaign from lead investors. Testimonials are end of funnel content. Look at it like this. If you're going to a restaurant and you're deciding between two restaurants, you're typically going to look at reviews. You're at the stage when you know you're going to eat and you know you're going to go somewhere, but you are just using that last piece of content to make you decide which restaurant is going to be better for your needs. It's the same thing with investor testimonials. Someone who knows they're going to invest might just be at that tipping point and looking at testimonials to ensure that this investment is going to be the best use of your dollar. So um, I recommend getting testimonials of you know why people invested X amount of dollars in your company. If you have any um, institutional investors or VCs, or you can even have accelerator programs as well, leave you testimonials. That's great content you should create and update in a weekly basis across you know all these three channels. You could potentially even add that content to your email drip as well. Next, raise milestones. So whenever you hit the minimum in your campaign, that minimum varies from campaign to campaign. Sometimes it's 25K, other times it's 50 50K. So you should update when you hit your minimum. And from there, I would update in 50K or 100K increments. And again, this content is an email newsletter, a raise update, and a social post. You're gonna wanna blast that across those three channels. Fund disbursement updates. Now, I believe the portal will automatically do this for you. However, you should also update via email to any existing investors as well. Perk disbursements. So if you are dispersing any perks at the closing of your campaign, you should let people know that perks are coming via email, portal, and social as well. Business updates and product updates. This is a biggie. I think most campaigns fail to actually update their investor community on the traction in the business. Ideally, you should look to do a business update about every week or every other week at the minimum. It could be as simple as this. What we did in 
business this week, what we accomplished this week. And every week you re- you are recapping anything or any traction that you had in that biz- in, in the business. You can discuss financials. You can discuss where you are on your roadmap. You discuss potential new partnerships, locations, new team new team members, etc. And any success you've had maybe in product development as well. Providing photos is even better, especially if you're creating a product and using funding to further development, develop your product, you absolutely must provide product development updates. Next, larger content promotion. So this is webinar promotion or blog promotions, right? You should be emailing people and submitting a portal update and posting a social post whenever you are going to run a webinar. I recommend doing at least one week bef- one week prior promoting your webinars and then doing a one day before as well. You could also, in addition, do a today's the day, like join our live webinar promotion uh, as well across all channels. And then for your blog, so if you have a, a new blog that's coming out, if you've been featured on a podcast, if you want to repost your webinar content for anyone who might have missed the live event, your email portal updates and social channels are a great place to repurpose that content. So 100%, again, you should be promoting any new blogs or vlogs you create, promoting any podcast features, promoting uh, webinar recordings that you had, and then also promoting any potential new press or coverage that you've received. Okay, so that's kind of the shorter form content, like those emails, portal updates, social posts. Again, ideally on a weekly basis or twice a week basis, depending on how much fodder you can create in the campaign. Let's talk about larger pieces of content. These are webinars, blogs, or vlogs, and they're definitely necessary and great to create for a campaign. Again, because one, it provides extra touch points in the campaign, especially webinars, which give you the opportunity to meet and greet your investors live. And then blogs are a great platform to expand on the raise page and provide additional information. So let's talk about webinars. I definitely recommend running a monthly webinar for your campaign. However, we have seen some success with doing like weekly office hours as well, just creating an open space and time for people and investors to come and meet and you live, maybe stay 15, 20 minutes, get their questions asked and leave. It's just good to hold space in, in general, just for your investors to meet with you and speak with you live. Here's what these webinars can look like. You can do an, an investor panel, an investor Q&A. I recommend that for every campaign as a minimum. Do an investor Q&A where you run through your pitch deck, maybe in the first 15 minutes, talk about you and the company, and then leave the rest open like as an open-ended session for people to just ask your questions. Have a moderator on the event so they can moderate the question and then also like further ask you more questions if you ever if you start to hear crickets or anything like that. You can do an investor interview, again, also highly recommended to bring in your lead investor and let them let them speak live on the event to investors on why they invested and let an investor ask the investor questions. Because, again, it's great third party validation to hear from another investor's mouth why someone, why they invested and to encourage other investors to invest, right? It's much better than you promoting the event all the uh, the raise all the time it's much better when you have someone in your court also promoting it and it's an investor themselves another great idea for a webinar if you have a product uh, do a deep dive into your product and even do a product demo show how it works and again you can do maybe like a 30 minute product demo deep dive and then leave like 30 minutes 20 minutes open for q a at the end Uh, Lastly, you could do a meet the team where you bring on your entire executive team, let them each speak to their experience, why they're part of the company, and really, really um, showcase to investors that this team is the team that's going to bring an idea alive. Because you have a billion dollar idea, and if you have the wrong team, that idea is not worth anything. It takes people to bring ideas to reality. So that's also another great webinar you can host. Let's talk about blogs. So I always highly recommend taking webinar videos, recorded events, and transforming them into blog, a piece of written content just to support your SEO. Definitely post it on your website when done. However, you could also shoot the following blogs outside of webinars. Um, Founder story. So again, 
I recommend shooting a vlog version. So creating a video like this and then writing the copy to go with it to post as a blog. Video is just more engaging. More people watch video than they read blogs. So definitely create a blog, post it on YouTube, create some copy to go with that, and then post it on your blog, then post it on your portal update, your social posts, right? Create an email promotion around it to get that content out there. Um, an investor testimonial repurpose. So ideally your investor should be creating testimonials for you. You can do an aggregate of multiple investor testimonials. Say you don't have any videos, but you have a lot of positive reviews on your portal. What you could do is aggregate all those great investor testimonials into one large uh, blog. And then you can create a portal update to promote that blog saying like, here's what investors are saying about us or investors are raving about X company. But you could also repurpose an individual investor testimonial. So say you have one large lead investor, you have them shoot a video, two, three minutes on why they invested. Take that video, create some copy for it, then post it on your blog, create a promotion for it for your via email, portal, social posts, etc. You should also definitely create a video uh, or vlog or blog around your unique differentiators. Again, a great piece of content to not only to live on your blog, but to repurpose via email in your email drip, as, we, as we've discussed. What else? Market opportunities. So discussing the size of your market, that's really important to investors as it doesn't make any sense to invest in a company that has a dwindling market size. So you really want to play on market and showcase the market and do a lot of research and put in research articles that show that, look, the numbers are growing and right now is a great place to be. And as an investor, as if you invest early, you get to benefit you know, from all this momentum that the market is going to experience. Again, ideally founder shooting this as a vlog and then repurposing it into some written content. And then lastly, when you go live, you should create an equity crowdfunding 101 blog. Discuss what equity crowdfunding means for your company and what it is, because equity crowdfunding is a new ph phenomenon, right? Even though it is about a little over 10 years old, we need to educate people on what that means. Most people don't know what equity crowdfunding is and what that means for your company and how everyday investors can now own shares in your company. So once you go live, you should definitely create an equity crowdfunding one blog, post that on your portal. Like we're live on Start Engine. Here's what this means. Here's a link to this blog we wrote. We're really excited to be here, et cetera. So a definite must in the beginning of your campaign. So that is our checklist to recap it really quick. Let's go through it. Email drips. Set them up prior to your campaign. Set up a Facebook lead form ad campaign and link them to your email marketing tool to convert potential new leads and to keep in existing investors warm. Two, weekly email newsletters, raise updates, and social posts. Again, you can follow the content in this checklist. You should be creating content around investor testimonials, raise milestones, perk disbursement, Business updates, that's a big one, big, big one. Please update investors on the progress of your business. Uh, webinar promos and any new press, blogs, or webinar recap content that you want to send out to your investors. This is the type of content you can push out on a weekly basis. Third, larger pieces of content, webinars and blogs slash vlogs. You should create live events. You should be on podcasts. You should invite people to listen to these invests or attend them and then repurpose these larger events into that weekly content like your emails, portals, and social posts. And then create blogs like this one or write written blogs to fill in the gaps of your race page and to give people the chance to hear from you why your investment opportunity is the best one. Again, content is essential to equity crowdfunding. You should have a content calendar. You should be creating these pieces of content to keep investors warm and engaged and to provide the extra touch points that's just not possible with advertising. If you have any questions about the content you should create for your campaign, please feel free to reach out to us, the DNA team, or me through my LinkedIn. Again, my name's 
Damaris Morse, uh, Content Marketing Manager at DNA. I'm happy to address any questions or concerns that you might have. And I wish you the best of luck in your equity crowdfunding campaign and creating content for your campaign as well. Have a great one. Bye-bye.